Thank you for having us. Uh, the first thing I'm making tonight are uh, roasted red pepper hummus in cucumber cups. This is a recipe from Jada De Laurentiis. I don't know if you're familiar with her from Food Network, but she's definitely not a vegan. So I just think it's good to know that you don't always have to go to just vegan sites to find vegan recipes. Some things are just vegan on their own. So I'm, what I'm doing now is I'm using a half a cup of jarred roasted red peppers that I cut and diced. But first, what I like to do, if you if you have to a recipe and you have to mince garlic, I just think this is a nice little trick. Put it down the tube first. And it minces it for you. Okay, so then I'm going to add the peppers. I don't want to come out. We're going to bait, apparently. And I have a carton of cannellini beans. This isn't technically a hummus, it's a bean dip, but it's a great way to get your legumes in for people that don't really like beans or don't think they do. So this is drained and rinsed of the same as a 15 ounce can. And I've got just a little bit of tahini. And tahini is just sesame seeds that are ground up. I get the kind from Trader Joe's. It doesn't have anything else in it. It separates. This throws a lot of people off. So I like to point it out that oil on top is not added oil. It's just the oil as like any kind of nut butter that's natural and doesn't have anything to keep it from separating. It's always going to, that oil is going to rise to the top. So it is not added. And this sesame seed does help make, you know, get more of the fat soluble vitamins. It helps. It's creaminess. Okay. And then I'm going to add, I've got some cumin, salt, and a little cayenne. I like the cayenne. You can omit it if you don't like it, but it's, it's not very much. And cayenne is actually a flavor enhancer. And I've got a little lemon juice. I don't think I got everything in there. I got the garlic. Okay. So I'm just going to make some noise. Scrape down the side. Very simple to make. Oops. Put this into a, a bowl. I've kept a little bit, a few red specks in there. I think that you can do it, process it as much as you want. I don't mind those little specks. Cleans the blade out. Makes it easier to get the rest of it out. All right, that was very quick. Next, I'm taking, uh, I already started this. I took a, a cucumber. Once you get past peeling that plastic off, uh, it's pretty easy from there. And what I did is I cut it in half. I, I put it up to, I've got a, my bench scraper has inch marks on it. So I just, because you want to cut these about an inch apart. Maybe, and then you just take your fork and scrape down the side. It's a lot easier to do this when it's a longer piece. 
and you just go around and around and puts these nice little ridges in. You can also, I mean, you don't have to put anything into it. You can, or you can do it however, with whatever tool you want. And then I'm just gonna cut them about an inch apart. And taking the small end of a melon baller, I'm just gonna go around, make a little hole in there to hold the dip. Save the cucumber, put it in a salad. Okay, and then I'm just gonna take a little, little spoon and fill that cavity. And then I'm just gonna put a little, little parsley in there. You could use mint or cilantro. It just makes it kind of pretty. And that's all there is to that. It's very simple. What you don't use, you can you know put into a roll up. You chop up the rest of the uh, cucumbers and just make a, a roll up. It's a very nice, it's a very tasty dip. So I hope you'll enjoy it. And that is, I'll put the rest of them later, but you can just see what they look like. All right, off to you, Jody. Thank you, Michelle. Those are absolutely precious. I love that. Uh, today, oh, happy holidays, everybody, and welcome. Today, I'd like to share with you a um, family favorite recipe that I made just a little bit healthier and veganized that uh, my family used to call Christmas Crunch. Uh, you could definitely call it a Hawan uh, Hanukkah Crunch, Kwanzaa Crunch, even Festivus Crunch if you want to. Uh, so what it is, is the fun little take on, you know, those really, when you go in the mall and you smell those cinnamon roasting almonds and they smell so delicious and like the holidays, this is going to give you, make your house smell like that too. So we're going to start with um, a little bit of aquafaba to coat our mixture with, and we want to get that a little bit frothy. Um, so I'm just going to take my little whisk here. I have just a little bit, and I'm just going to a few quick seconds. I'm gonna whip that up, I'm not quite to a meringue, but almost like a little frothy um, egg mixture, but we're gonna use the, uh, the aquafaba instead. And that's all it takes to get it nice and frothy. And I use just a couple of tablespoons worth. I'm gonna eyeball it um, in the bottom of my bowl. And then I can always add more to coat. We just wanna give these a, a nice chance for the cinnamon and sugar mixture to uh, stick to that. And I'm using some unsalted pretzels and some little um, sourdough nugget pretzels. Nice little blend of textures. I've got four cups worth. And I'm still going to add one cup worth of nuts. I have half almonds and half walnuts. And you want to just use raw, uh, raw you know, unroasted, unsalted, the kind you would find in the baking aisle or the produce aisle. You can add those. And we're going to give them a quick, gentle toss. We don't want to break the pretzels, but we do want to really evenly coat everything with the aquafaba. Doesn't take much. So you just another little bit more. How much you need is going to depend a lot on what size and shape pretzel that you use. So you might just need an extra tablespoon, but two to three tablespoons should do it. And that's all you need. Hold everything nicely. And then what I have in this little bowl is I have, um, instead of using like a refined sugar or granulated sugar, I've opted for uh, coconut sugar and date powder. Um, I like the Well Your World date powder, uh, but you can also get that usually um, in stores as well. And, or um, the coconut sugar you can find locally in most stores. And I've added a half a cup of that with one table, I'm sorry, two tablespoons of cinnamon. I already blended in most of it, but I'm just going to give a little shake. So I just wanted you to see that I had it in there. And then we're going to toss this 
all around with our pretzels, our walnuts, and our almonds. And it already smart, starts to smell delicious. a nice coating and you can start to see they already start to look just like the mall almonds. You could jazz things up even if you wanted to have, do like cinnamon and spicy. You could do a little bit of cayenne in there if you like a little sweet and spicy at the same time. Uh, you could also, I was thinking as I was making my little test batch, I thought, oh, I would love to do this with gingerbread spice blend instead of just the cinnamon, that would be really fun. Uh, local spicery makes a really nice gingerbread blend. And I thought, oh, that would be extra holiday-like. But that's all there is to that. And then we just put that on a parchment line sheet. See if I can do that backwards. <laughs> and there'll be a little bit of cinnamon sugar in the bottom of your bowl. And that's okay because you're going to use that. Um, you could put your uh, ice cream. Tell about that. Uh, you could put some your dried cranberries and cherries in here right now because the oven is only preheated at 250, so it's nice and low. But I like to wait until like the last maybe 15 minutes because we're going to bake this at 250 for um, about an hour. But every 15 minutes, we're going to give it a nice gentle stir to make sure everything's staying nice and coated and we don't have anything sticking together too much. So, um, but what I like to do. Like I said, is I'll right maybe the last 15 or last 20 minutes of the of the baking, I'm gonna toss my cherries and cranberries in this little bit of extra cinnamon and then add it to it so they don't get too dried out. I like them to be a little bit juicy still. So um we just gonna pop that in our made for uh made for TV swap out here. Um and then what you end up, like I said, first of all, your house is gonna smell amazing. But then you have this really nice crunchy munchy mix. It's got the pretzels and the whole almonds, uh, the cherries. Uh, it's about just a half a cup of dried cherries and cranberries. You can do all or one of the other. I just like to blend them because it's festive. Um, or you can use whatever dried fruit you love. And it just makes it really, it keeps really well in a store, um, an air, stored in an airtight container. And you can give this as holiday gifts. It's great. You can use gluten-free pretzels if you need to. Um, but it's a really fun, really fun little crunchy holiday mix that everybody really enjoys. So I hope you like this uh, fun little thing. And like I said, you can jazz it up with whatever spice blends you like as well. And um, I'll hand it right back over to Michelle for our next fun dish. I muted myself so you wouldn't hear me clanking around the kitchen. Jody, those look really good. And I love that smell. And then like, we were at uh, Greenfield Village for the holiday nights and it smells so good. And then the price, what is happening to my, it's not. I unmuted, now am I unmuted? I had to do it two different ways. Okay, so those smell really good. I'm gonna try them. We love the those almonds. We just don't like the price when you're out. So the next thing I'm making is, um, a garlic, like an herb cheese roll, like a log. Uh, one of the toughest things people find when they're trying to go vegan or plant-based is giving up cheese. So this time of year, there are a lot of cheese balls and cheese logs. So I thought I would show you how to make one. Also this time of year, most of us are running a little bit short on time. So I'm gonna, I gave you a recipe for trying it. For these kind of things, you need to soak cashews, you need a high-speed blender. Or it's just not going to be as creamy. So the version I'm going to show you, if you don't have uh, the high-speed blender, you don't have the time, this one works really well. I've got the tree line uh, herbed cheese. It's a plant-based um, French-style cheese. So it is like it's got it's made with cashews and some other things, but it's really it's a nice blend. And it's easier than, uh, it definitely takes less time than making it yourself. So, but the other thing about the, the recipe that I gave you there, these things take a while because you have to, even though you're using a high speed blender, you really do need to soak the cashews for quite a while because you want to get this as creamy as possible. So 
you look at the recipe and it's a reminder to always read your recipe all the way through because if you think you're going to make something that night and then you read the part where it says soak for 12 hours then you know that kind of throws off your timing so i'm going to do this i'm putting and this part would be the same whether you made it or bought it i'm putting the mixture onto a piece of parchment paper this is a little bit messy whether you're making it or using the tree line or some other plant-based cheese. I'm going to try to make it into a log. Lovely. And then you fold the paper over it about halfway. Let's move it in here. I'm just going to roll it a little bit to get it into more of a like a rolled log shape. I'm making a lot of noise. I'm sure this paper sounds so much louder to all of you than it does to me, and it sounds pretty loud to me. Okay, so you get it into a log, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just a little bit smoother. I'm going to put a of the noise right now. And then you take your whatever, whatever you like. I have uh, ter fresh tarragon and chive that I uh, chopped up. You can use chopped walnuts, chopped candy walnuts. You can buy some things like that to put it on. Uh, Pink peppercorns is another really nice option with sea salt. And then you're just going to shake the uh, whatever you're topping it with onto the parchment. You can also use, if you have a dehydrator and you have one of the nine stick dehydrator sheets, the really thin ones, those work really well too. I'm just going to roll this mixture, this. Uh, Used about a just shy of a half cup. I like this green. I think it's festive too. So that's why I, I pick the herbs. And I think they taste good too. And they've got so much nutritional value. And then you carefully pick it up and tap the ends in. Careful, these are soft cheeses, so they don't they don't hold their shape very well. Okay. And then I have um here it is. I like Mary's Gone Crackers. If you've had those, I have this particular one is the super seed. So there's no added fat. I mean, there's the fat from the seeds. This has uh, let's see if I can read uh, brown rice, quinoa, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, flax seeds, sesame seeds, poppy seeds, little seaweed spices. It, it's organic too. So I like having these. Then you could put, I think, um, Jody, I think we were talking about a charcuterie board maybe before. And this is something you could put on one of those. You could just serve it with crackers like I'm doing. If you make your own, I just want to say if you make your own and it comes out, as when you do make your own, you have to, have to add enough water to, to blend the cashews. Um, and if it gets too thin, I just say put all your herbs in and just make it a dip you know, just instead of a log. And that works because it's just as tasty. Clean my plate up a little bit here. It's very simple. Back to you, Jody. Michelle, I love the simple elegance of that presentation. That would impress anybody, and yet it just 
uh, is so, so easy to put together, but it's just lovely. Uh, today, uh, what I want to share with you, some of you may have seen there's a trend out now where you um, where you can do like hummus boards or well, actually the trend is butter boards, but we don't do that, right? So, uh, but the Esselstyns, Jean, Jean and Anne recently did a hummus board where they put their hummus out right on their beautiful cutting board and then they layered it with just tons of vegetables and fruits and nuts and all of just kinds of beautiful, beautiful uh, presentation to share at a holiday party. Um, it's just me here at home, uh, but if I was going to do this uh, for a party, I would probably layer some beautiful um, ornamental kale or some gorgeous greens and then put my hummus down. And then I'm gonna top mine with a cranberry salsa. Um, but since I don't have you know, a big party going on right here, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna play it up here from home, just on my smaller little platter. And we're gonna start with the base, which is going to be a pumpkin spiced hummus, a chipotle pumpkin hummus. And I thought that would be really fun topped with a zingy cranberry salsa. So to start with our, um, actually, you know what? I'm gonna make my cranberry salsa first, just that, since I can't wash, run and wash and put my uh, food processor, the salsa won't stick quite as bad as the hummus. So I'm gonna start with the cranberries first. And I just have one bag of cranberries that I've rinsed off. <laughs> So that's a 12 ounce bag. Usually that's what the cranberries will come in. And then I'm going to do, um, this part is a little bit optional. You could do an apple or an orange because we're gonna sweeten this naturally. We're not gonna add any sugar to these cranberries. So I had a little tiny apple and a little tiny orange. So I'm gonna to toss those right in there with that. And that's gonna give us some nice sweetness. And then I'm also going to put in, um, I call for four to five medjool dates, but the medjool dates that I have right now are super huge. So I'm just using three of those. I've made sure that the pits are out and I've just chopped them coarsely because of course we're going to pulse this until it's a nice salsa. And then I have um, a jalapeno too. Like I would normally want to put two jalapenos in mine. I like, I like things real spicy, but I don't know if you can see these jalapenos are ginormous. <laughs> so I'm just going to go with one this time. And if you have a um, tender palate, you could also use a green chili for a slightly milder or even um, some pretty sweet, sweet bell peppers for a little added flavor without any heat. And then I'm going to put in um, a teaspoon of grated ginger. I keep my uh, ginger in the freezer, my little ginger root right in the freezer, and then I just use my microplaner to take off whatever I need right from frozen. It keeps it forever, so you don't have to worry about losing any ginger. And then we're going to do, we're going to do one uh, chipotle in a dough. Oh no, sorry, that's for our hummus. We almost mixed things up. Um, we'll go with our cilantro. We're doing one bunch of cilantro and I'm using the stems and all. There's lots of nutrients in there, so I don't want to waste a thing. And I'm going to put in one bunch of green onions or scallions. Red onion would work beautifully in this as well. Um, whatever you have is just fine. I'm going to save just a few to, to garnish the top a little bit with as well. And that is it. We're going to give it just a quick uh, few pulses until we like the consistency. Um, I'm going to apologize in advance for the little bit of noise that we're going to make. Hopefully, Zoom will. Uh, I almost forgot the lime juice. Two tablespoons of fresh lime juice. That's going to give it some wonderful things. You could also use lemon juice or orange juice. That would be just lovely in this, too. Okay, I'm just going to give it a quick spray just because it's making a nice large batch and I just, just want to make sure it all gets shot, chopped evenly. Wow. 
one more little halt, maybe two. But... Okay, that should do it. And we'll transfer this right back into this container so I can make the hummus for us real quick. This smells so delicious. I wish we could get the zoom, we could get the smell of vision going for you guys. And as this sets, of course, the cranberries are going to do their thing and turn a little bit redder and get nice and juicy. But you can see it's just full of color and just packed with vitamin C, which is excellent for our immunity right now this time of year. We have all of the cranberries are just loaded with it. The cilantro is actually a green, so it's heart healthy as well. Wonderful for our endothelial cells and keeping our heart healthy and strong all holidays long. The little ones up in our hummus, I'm okay. I'm gonna mix them together right now. Okay, now we're gonna build our hummus, which is gonna be our foundation layer. So I'm gonna go with the can of chickpeas. And this is where I got the aquafaba or the pretzel mixture. It's just the, the liquid right there from the chickpeas. Uh, two cloves of garlic, a tablespoon of lime juice. We're gonna use one chipotle and adobo sauce. These are pretty spicy, so if you, um, have that tender palate, you might choose to just go with a sprinkle of chipotle powder. Um, instead, that won't have quite as much kick. You can control the amount a little bit better. We're gonna go with a tablespoon of maple syrup. You can also use date syrup as well. And you could also even just put a date in there, to be honest with you. If you had a nice, uh, fresh, and easy date, you wouldn't even have to soak it. You could pop it right in there. And then a half a cup of pumpkin puree. This is the, just the plain, organic, pure pumpkin puree, not the pine mix kind. Mm -hmm. Just the pumpkin. A quarter a cup of tahini. Now, you could also use um, sesame seeds. You could just use the equal amount of sesame seeds. You wouldn't even have to, you know, tahini is just blended. Uh, sesame seeds, you could use the sesame seeds right in there, or you can even soak some pumpkin seeds, some pepitas, and put that in there once they're nice and soft and soakened. That would be a, a really fun uh, variation on this as well. And then we're going to put a little bit of cilantro, just a little bit. Oops. Make sure I I didn't use anything. I don't think I did. But I might. Oh, my spices. Okay, for our spice blend, I have some cumin and some smoked paprika, and then just a little bit of cinnamon to add something, a little festivity to it. It's a little interest. And now we're going to make it a little bit more noise. This is the part where you guys can share your favorite flavor of hummus in the chat. Okay, 
that looks pretty good. Now we've got this smoky chipotle pumpkin hummus. It's gonna add like a nice creaminess, a little bit of zing, a little bit of spice. And you could always serve these in bowls side by side, um, or we can do one of these uh, trending uh, beautiful boards that seem to be all the holiday rage. And I'm going to just plate that out. And you could go as spicy as this with this as you want it to, you want to. I would just taste and adjust these things to to your palate. Only your taste buds are are going to know what will make this thing for you. That's one of my favorite cooking tips to tell everybody when they're making someone else's recipes. When you get to that finishing point, always take a minute to taste and adjust and see what you know. Do you want to add a little bit more lime juice? Do you want to add a little bit more heat? Do you want to add a little bit more sweet? Maybe you need just a little touch of the of the um, maple syrup or a date or something like that. Um, and now we will add, uh, there's my spoon. Now we're going to top with this really pretty cranberry salsa. And this is going to just be so fun to do like the double dip because then you're going to have like this fresh, refreshing, uh, but a little bit zippy uh, cranberry salsa. And then you have the creamy, the really, really nice smoky creamy base of this hummus. So the texture difference is just really fun uh, to do. And you can see how, I mean, the only thing better than dip is two dips, right? And then to uh, serve, I've done a combination of sweet and savory. So we could do some apple slices. I also, um, like Michelle, I had the Mary's Gone Crackers. It would be fun to do around there. If you were doing a party, you would definitely want to have something like that or some toasted pita would be lovely to serve that with toasted pita wedges. Um, and then also, of course, super healthy veggie dippers. You have to have, uh, get your crunchies in. So I have some beautiful uh, biased sliced carrots, some cucumber, some celery, of course. And I find the trick to when you're serving these veggies like this, make them nice and short so nobody's tempted to double dip. <laughs> so I just do the little one scoop size. And then, of course, these beautiful uh, mini peppers. To me, these are just absolutely nature's chips. They are the perfect uh, scoop. And you can put those around as well. And then if you really wanted to go all out, if you had a nice, big, beautiful board and you were serving this for a party, you could definitely do um, a lot of uh, different, you know, nuts or maybe even some slices of like Michelle's cheese ball, you know, cheese blog, you could really just make this a huge, beautiful uh, presentation. Get some more carrots on this side. But if you cut your carrots long and pretty like this, they look just like a, a lovely little chip. And some more cucumber. And then I'm gonna garnish this with a little bit of the, um, I saved a little bit of the zest from the orange and that's gonna give us a nice little added layer of finishing flavor. Oops. You can also, that, that would be another thing too, is just to put some of like maybe some little, if you have the big board presentation going, put a couple of little uh, clementines or mandarins around with the apple and you, you have something for everybody when you do that. And then we're gonna garnish with some beautiful orange zest. And you could even, if I had uh, thought of it, I would have saved a few of the whole cranberries to stick around the board and on top. That way people know instantly what it is. And that's always a nice touch when you're garnishing is to use what's inside the dish for the garnish to give people a little sneak peek as to what it is. So I'm gonna try and lift this up for you guys so you can see how you can make this really fun. Ooh. Can everybody see that pretty good? 
Um, you can get this beautiful layered board going on of the chipotle hummus, the cranberry salsa, and then all these, and whatever fun dippers you like, of course, but these are some really healthy options that you could serve to any, you know, any kind of uh, style, no matter who, what, if you have um, omnivores, vegetarians, vegans, every, this is everybody food. Everybody will love this. So thank you so much, and I hope you enjoy, and back to Michelle. Um, okay. It does look delicious. And I think everything we're making right now goes for any kind of palate, which I think is nice. If you're going to a party, if you're having people over or just enjoying it yourself, I think you should enjoy that one, um, Jody. But uh, the next thing I'm going to make, and I, back to that, though, I don't think you don't have to tell people it's vegan. I just think that gets some people just shut that off like, oh, vegan. I mean, you like watermelon, right? And, and that's vegan too. People just get very kind of hung up on some things. So the next thing I'm making are raw peppermint brownies. This is a little modification on a Chef AJ recipe that I love. So I've got two cups of walnuts. You can use other nuts if you'd like. And I'm putting those into the food processor. And then I'm going to process them. Uh, Want to get them, depends on how fine you want them. Sometimes you might want a little bit of the nut to show, or sometimes you just want it more of a fudgy texture. So just be careful that you don't go turn it into butter because that's not the ideal thing here. So I'm going to make some noise. Next thing I'm going to put in cacao powder. It's half a cup. I like cacao. It is less processed than any other form, but you can certainly use cocoa powder. It's very good for you. It's good for your heart and your brain. Just like uh, Jody was talking about the endothelium or the endothelial cell. This help. This is also good for the that innermost lining of your arteries. My want to let that sit for a bit because when you open it up you get a cloud of cacao okay so i'm going to add the dates they're jewel dates also i always recommend and you get this you can take the pit out take the stem off uh, like to wash them we just rinse them off and wipe them off and then always inspect them to make sure they don't have little um, mold or seeds I, cut, I chop mine. If they're dry, definitely soak them for a bit. And I don't throw that water out because if I do need to add more moisture in, I like that that water that they were soaking in has taken on some of their sweetness. So it's a good way to add it back. I'll let you know I'm waiting for it to form a ball and kind of move around the bowl. One seems to be taking longer <laughs> when you're on camera. I'm going to add a little vanilla. I like to use the powder, but you can use the powder is usually about a quarter the amount that you would of the extract. And then I'm using peppermint uh, flavor. 
Just be careful. Peppermint, I mean, this time of year, chocolate and peppermint are a great combination. Just the peppermint can be, can get overpowering. So I always like measure it next to, I don't want to measure it right over the bowl because if I spill, this kind of kills my dish. So that's, I put it in there and I'm going to give it one more little process to combine. <laughs> smells really good thing about this time of year I try not to have sugar because I don't feel good after it one year in fact I thought um because I can see that I used to before I was vegan I just loved those Hershey's kisses well I didn't love them during the year I could look, walk by those little silver things all year but let the red and green ones come out and I was gone I just had to have the little red and green ones and then one year I actually thought I had MS because I felt so bad after, like my legs were heavy and I was exhausted and I finally figured out it was the sugar. So I don't usually have sugar. Um, it is pretty inflammatory, but the other thing I just wanna point out if you're mostly in this for the animals, just know that sugar, unless it says it's vegan, like wholesome, I think that's the brand you were using, right, Jody? Um, Yes, that is vegan. Otherwise, they will use bone char to make the sugar whiter, which is pretty gross. So um, this already has enough peppermint and chocolate for my liking. So that's how I leave it. But it's kind of fun this time of year to use some candy canes. Maybe you want to um, crush them up and put them on top. Like roll what I did. I won't take the time because I want to have time for um, Jody's is that I made a tablespoon and formed them into bowl uh, balls. And then the other thing is I use this uh, silicone brownie bite mold and I press and make brownies. I love this thing. I keep it in the freezer and it's just enough. It's a little bite sort of portion control if you're looking for a little help with that. And then the other thing, just to make it a little bit more festive this time of year is the making a more like not an official truffle, but you can call it a truffle. So you can crush up the candy canes. These are from Whole Foods and they say they're vegan. So that's why I bought them. But otherwise, like I said, it just says sugar. It, it most likely isn't. So then I will take um, like a spoon and just put them in here. Um, I press down and then put that in the freezer or just taking because I just want to make sure Jody gets to make her cookies, just take a scoop out and then roll it into a ball. If it's a little hard to work with, just let the heat of your hands, you know, warm up the mixture so you can form it better. They're really good. They're just enough. Oh, that peppermint tastes so good. And that's all there is to it. So you can, you could roll them in a little bit of cacao powder or the crushed candy canes some chopped nuts, or you could dip them in chocolate if that's what you like and put a little bit of the candy cane on top of that, whatever you like. So I hope you'll try it and enjoy it. And back to you, Jody. Michelle, those sound like not only like the perfect party treat, but also the perfect gift to give people as well. Who would not love to receive chocolate for Christmas or the holidays, whatever you're celebrating. Uh, my cookies are, um, I mean, what would the holidays be without cookies, right? So these are a family favorite, and I'm so thrilled that there is finally such a thing as we can add coconut milk, so we can easily uh, make some of those old favorites that we've enjoyed through the generations. Uh, a lot of the recipes that we call for sweet peanut milk, we can now partake again. So I'm going to start. Our, my, my cookies are called paja, and so they're a Mexican coconut cookie, and I used to serve these and make these every year. We used to host a tamalada with um, the Michigan Personal Chefs Network that I was used to be a member of. And um, this was such a favorite and it's so fast and easy. We're gonna start with three cups of unsweetened shredded coconut. And you can definitely just do these in a mixing bowl, the, but since I have the stand mixer right here and I like to play with my toys at Christmas, so I'm gonna do that. And then we're gonna use uh, one can of sweetened so coconut milk. This one is 11 ounces. That's why I went with three cups of coconut. We're just going to pour that right in there. And then we are going to add in our, uh, the traditional uh, flavors of this cookie, which are pecans, chocolate chips, and apricots are the most traditional. I also add in some dried cherries and a little bit of dried cranberries because I like to go all out when I'm making these cookies. 
And I, I had to do that once when I didn't have quite enough uh, apricots and, and I love apricots, but they are not easy to find right now for some reason. Um, well, the unsulfured kinds are easy to find, but I like to, I prefer to use the, the um, I'm sorry, the unsulfured kind. So they're a little bit dark. They're not that pretty orange color, but they don't have the sulfur dioxide added. So that makes them just a little, a little bit healthier for us because uh, it's just the only ingredient on there is just the apricot. I'm going to use um, some vegan chocolate chips. I have the only brand my store I had today was the Enjoy Life. So that's fine. But if you um, happen to be lucky enough to live near a Trader Joe's, you could go with, um, they have a completely cacao chip now, which is just the cacao. There's no, nothing added to it. So that's a great option as well for a whole food option. We're just gonna do a half a cup of that, a half a cup of pecans, and half a cup of our dried fruit. And I, like I said, I have a combination here of apricots, cherries, and just a few cranberries. Since I already had them out from the snack mix, I thought, why not? We'll just go all in with that. And this is all there is to this cookie. You just blend it up real quick. Let's get everything evenly distributed. And we'll go in shape there. And, that's that one. and this smells absolutely heavenly. And then we just take a cookie scoop. And we just make little mounds. It doesn't look like it's going to stick together right at first, but it will. Don't worry, because as this heats up in the oven, it just melts into, into this beautiful golden caramely uh, cookie that is just absolutely scrumptious. And it is fast and easy as that. I won't waste you guys' this time doing this. But with the smaller cookie scoop, you'll get um, anywhere from a dozen and a half to two dozen, probably two dozen. And then um, the ones that I made earlier, I used a quarter cup scoop so you guys can see the difference. They're not going to grow in size. They're not going to spread. There's no baking powder or no baking soda or anything like that. They're just going to um, ease out just a little bit because the coconut milk is going to get nice and caramely and melty. So this will probably do two trays worth. And then you just pop these in a, a 325 degree oven for 10 to, 10 to 12 minutes. Uh, the smaller size, that's definitely all it's gonna take. And then I'll show you real quick the finished, the finished yumminess. You can see how they're just, you can just flatten them slightly. You can shape them however you want. And then you just pop them in your preheated oven. And then they come out this beautiful golden, I don't know if you guys can see those, but they're nice and toasty and golden. And I mean, like these, this is the quarter cup size. So this is a happy cookie. That's a gift giving cookie right there. And so that is just a really fun take on a Christmas cookie or a holiday cookie that requires three whole minutes prep. So enjoy everybody. All right. Wow. Everything you guys made looked so fantastic. I'm especially craving some kind of charcuterie board with the hummus and the salsa and the cheese log and everything. Just fantastic. Um, Michelle, I'm going to add you to the spotlight real quick so people can see both of you. Um, we do just have a few minutes left. Thank you for displaying everything. Wow. Those all look so fantastic. Jealous you guys have a delicious feast to eat after this. Um, let me see. Okay, so we do have a couple questions. Michelle, the first one is for you. And someone was just wondering why you use cannellini beans instead of garbanzo beans in your hummus. It's Jada De Laurentiis. Uh, it's her recipe. She's Italian and cannellini beans, I think just makes sense from that. So you can use, if you want to use uh, garbanzo beans, feel free. But it's just kind of a creamy bean to use too for something different absolutely yeah mix it up a bit all right um jody someone asked where would i find aquafaba at the grocery store and what is it exactly i know you did mention it slightly in your second second recipe but if you could just chat about that briefly yeah the aquafaba is just the liquid from a can of chickpeas 
or from your homemade chickpeas. If you like to, I like to do my chickpeas in the instant pot as well. So um, if you leave that, the, the water or the liquid in there and you put that in the fridge for a while while your chickpeas are cooling, you get this beautiful, rich, thick aquafaba liquid. And so it's almost like a protein infused water you can use for things like this. You can make uh, beautiful meringue cookies with it. You can whip it up and use it that way. Or you can even just use it to toss your veggies in for roasted veggies. Okay, very nice. Um. Let me see, Michelle, I think you, sorry, actually not you, Michelle, who gave the presentation. Someone also named Michelle asked the question um, about Jody's cookies. She said, I think, can you make these no bake, i.e. in the freezer? Um, I don't know how that would be if you've ever tried that, Jody. I'm not sure exactly why she's asking that question. Maybe just another variation. Hey. Honestly, don't know if that would work. I have not given that a try, but I do. Um, I'm not sure how well they would bind because it's the heat of the baking that kind of melts that condensed milk down into the coconut enough to hold it together. So you could certainly give it a try. There's nothing wrong with experimenting. It would still be edible and delicious. And then the worst case scenario is you'd end up having to bake them anyway to get them to stick together. <laughs> absolutely there's no there's no wrong when it comes to this these delicious ingredients <laughs> absolutely yeah michelle if you try that you know and it works out let us know could be an interesting variation um let me see someone else asked if the jalapenos are really needed for the salsa if you don't like heat not at all no that's i actually suggested you know if you want to cut the heat on that completely you could go with a, a green chili or a fresh Anaheim chili. Those would have hardly no meat, or you could even just use a sweet bell pepper. Um, you want you want a little component of the, the pepper flavor, but you don't necessarily need to go with heat if your taste buds don't enjoy it. So you could even use like even these mini sweet peppers if you wanted to, but it's just a little something I would add in there just for interest. But um, yeah, you can totally omit the hell of it being a hot pepper. You can go with the sweet pepper instead. All right. Yeah. So many different var variations. Do what sounds best to you, whatever you're going to be excited about eating, right? Yeah. 